Throughout our lives, we are taught that gravity is a force which the Earth uses to pull on us to keep us grounded. A lot of people will also know that gravity is a force between any two objects which have mass, meaning the Earth pulls you towards it, and you are also ever so slightly pulling the Earth closer to you at the same time. Many are also taught that gravity is what keeps the Moon in orbit around the Earth, and also what keeps Earth in orbit around the Sun. And people with some sort of physics background will have been taught about Newton's law of gravitation and the maths behind it all. But what if I told you that all of this about gravity was wrong? What if I told you that gravity wasn't actually a pulling force, nor was it a force at all? Crazy, right? Well, I hate to break it to you, but this is indeed a truth about our universe, and you have Einstein to blame for its discovery. So in this video, I'm going to take you from the classical ideas of gravity as proposed by Isaac Newton, which many of you are familiar with, and instead introduce you to the more complex, elegant, and accurate picture surrounding gravity, that being general relativity. In 1687, Isaac Newton put forward his notion of gravitation to explain why things you throw up in the air always come back down, and also why planets stay in somewhat stable orbits. His law of gravitation, which I'll put on screen now, was fundamental. Together with his three laws of motion, people could now accurately predict the paths of objects in freefall and begin to explain planetary motion mathematically. This is amazing, and still has its uses today. In fact, in most everyday life and encounters with gravity, Newton's interpretation is sufficient to comprehend what's going on and to predict what will happen. However, whilst Newton's laws were able to take humanity to the moon, they're not sufficient to take us further. There were still phenomena not explainable by Newton's classical idea of gravity, for example the precession of Mercury's orbit. Precession is something that happens when an object is spinning and the axis the object is spinning about is also spinning or rotating about something due to excess torque. The simplest illustration of this is that of a gyroscope. The gyroscope gets spinning and then the entire axis the thing is spinning about will begin to turn. This is precession, and in this case is caused by the weight of the gyroscope not being evenly distributed. Essentially, the gyroscope is trying to fall over, but since it's spinning it keeps falling in ever-changing directions, never reaching the ground until the spinning stops. Well, this effect is similar to that of Mercury's orbit. We know planets orbit in ellipses, but for Mercury, when it's at its closest point to the Sun, known as perihelion, the rest of its elliptical plane processes and turns slightly. Over time, this effect can be seen as Mercury's elliptical orbital plane turning slowly around the Sun. This is the precession of Mercury, and while its presence is predicted by Newton's laws and classical gravitation, its observed rate is significantly higher in reality than is predicted, which has puzzled scientists for many years. Another unexplainable phenomenon of Newtonian gravitation is that of gravitational lensing. Gravitational lensing is observed when looking at galaxy clusters or other high-mass objects in the night sky through a telescope. What you sometimes see is light from even more distant objects being deflected around the galaxy clusters. Sometimes this can form rings around the object known as Einstein rings. This makes it seem like light is coming from different places, but in reality it's being bent by the high-mass objects in between the light source and our telescope. This should sound very strange to you, as, in, as I'm sure you know that light is massless. It weighs exactly nothing. Yet the higher an object's mass, the greater this lensing effect is. But we know from Newton that only stuff with mass is affected by gravity. So why is light, which is zero mass, being bent and deflected by gravity? Newton's laws just cannot explain it. So along comes Albert Einstein, who in 1916 published his general theory of relativity, which tied many of those loose ends and acts to replace Newton's classical ideas on gravity. General relativity uses the notion of four-dimensional space-time. This can be quite difficult to grasp to begin with, and even harder to visualise in our 3D thinking minds, but essentially Einstein grouped time as a dimension much like left and right, forwards and backwards, and up and down. So combining all these dimensions gives you 4D space-time. This means when you're moving forward in time, you're really just moving along the time axis at a fixed rate. In Einstein's general theory of relativity, gravity isn't a force, but is rather the bending of space-time around objects with mass. I'll show 3D illustrations here on screen, but in reality this is happening in four dimensions. So stuff with mass warps space-time around it, but with more massive objects warping space-time by larger amounts. This can be crazy to think of, as really space-time is the fabric of our universe, and mass seems to have this incredible effect of bending and curving the universe. This explains gravitational lensing easily, as galaxy clusters are bending the fabric of space-time, so that light, although it's still travelling in a straight line, is travelling through a curved surface, and so appears to be bent. This is like drawing a straight line on a piece of paper and then bending the paper. The line is still straight but doesn't appear so from an outward observer not on the paper, just like us observing the light around a galaxy from Earth. Recalculations of the precession of Mercury's orbit using general relativity also match closely the observed precession. Since space and time are grouped together into space-time which itself is warped by matter, this also has the profound consequence that time itself slows down closer to massive objects. This can be taken to the extreme, whereby time itself entirely stops at the centre of a black hole, known as a singularity, due to its infinite density and enormous mass. 
As well as time dilation, lengths are also contracted by the warping of space-time, such that observers travelling at different speeds experience time and length differently. One way to think of space-time bending instead of gravity being a force is through a simple example of a ball being thrown on Earth. Classically, you'd say that gravity is a force pulling down on the ball to bring it back to the floor. However, using general relativity, you'd say that Earth's mass bends space-time towards Earth from around the ball. So when it's thrown, it will travel in a straight line, but the curvature of space-time towards the Earth means that it appears to fall down. General relativity is such an interesting way to look at the universe, and as I've already described, has had profound consequences in cosmology, astrophysics and astronomy. It's so rich and complicated that it requires many hours of learning for someone to begin to come to terms to. But I hope this short video has been useful as an introduction. One final thing, only around 5% of the people who watch my videos are subscribed. So if you've made it this far and enjoyed the video, please consider subscribing. It's free, it helps out my channel a bunch, and you can always change your mind. So with all that said and done, I thank you for watching this short physics video.